fine. All right, and hi everyone. If you're just coming in, there we go. We are here. Right. We are live, and I have audio. We're just gonna see whether um, Susie has audio. Susie is with me. Susie, if you can say something. Can you hear me? Okay. Let's see. Move my camera down a bit. Yeah. If you're just watching, like we're just doing our little sound taste. Yes. And we've got Susie as audio as well. All right, Susie. So I'm so excited to have you here today and to our listeners and our viewers. Um, the reason why I'm just so excited to have Susie here is because we were in a mastermind last year and I absolutely just was so inspired by Susie. She always gives such great advice and feedback and she's just such a kick-ass person. So I couldn't wait to have her on the Savvy Business Show. Susie Ashworth is a lady with a lot of accomplishments. She is a Hay House author. She is a TEDx speaker. She created the world's first video hypnotherapy program called the birthing school not the calm birth school sorry oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the calm birth school um and now she works with her um or with women we should say in her flagship program that's called the limitless life experience and Susie, i'm gonna kind of leave it up to you to tell us a little bit more about how you've come to this work and then um just anything that I missed that you'd like to add in that intro. Welcome. We're so excited to have you here. And we have like... Uh, thank you so much for having me. Actually, that was a really pretty spot on and succinct introduction. I think that the work that I do, the way that I describe it now is mindset messaging and miracle training for women in business. And I am all about supporting women to create businesses that they love so that they can live a life of limitless experiences and over the last four and a half years of being in business things have changed and grown and developed at such a rate I'm often looking back going oh did I do that or oh, did I do that and um, I think that it's that's a really good lesson for everybody that you never know what's going to be happening in a year or two or three years time yes. and so to really just focus on the journey and enjoying each moment and I'm getting better and better at that. So. Yes, and I have to say, so if you don't follow Susie on Instagram, please do go and follow her because I get my daily fix of inspiration <laughs> with her. Um, just because you are really, I think a lot of women, I was at an event the other day, um, and this woman who is, like, let's say the next generation up from us, she was definitely more in her 50s, um, and I remember her turning around and just sort of in a bitter way saying, it's not worth it, you know? Um, and it like, it like just, you know, she was very successful, etc. but she was so bitter about her journey to success. And I feel like, um, that's often what we as entrepreneurs are missing. We're like thinking one day when we get there, then it's going to be amazing and wonderful. And we forget to enjoy the experience now of, oh you know, gosh. yeah. I think that everybody, any successful person that, you, you know, I read a lot of biographies from a lot of people who have done amazing things in their lives, whether it's business or charity or um, actresses, actors, and all of the most successful people say you need to not be focused on the outcome because the outcome is usually the anticlimax. And it is about each of those little steps. And I think that it can, it's really easy to get disillusioned and really easy to get frustrated because the work that we do as entrepreneurs, we're in a minority. It's not easy. People don't get us. It can feel like, whoa, we're on a crazy roller coaster. And all of that stuff can be hard if you don't have the right support it can be hard if you're not focused on the bigger vision and it can be hard if you allow your work to be everything that you do and so i hate the idea of balance um i try to focus on presence but i think that if you can bring presence to wherever you are in all areas of your life um that is a really good um, um 
uh, for me, it's, a, it's an approach that works that helps me enjoy the moment more. Yes. And I think that's what's the hard thing in business to do. And I definitely got schooled in this big time from when I started my business until now is that letting, like you just said it, letting go of the outcome and focusing more on just the work and just the enjoyment and how can I make this more fun and what's going to make me feel more whole as a person. And if you can get that, it's, it's almost as if your success speeds up. I feel like people who really get this, like if I just watch some of the people that I really admire and I see um, with myself, when I'm in that flow where I'm actually enjoying the journey and I'm and I let go of the daily ups and downs and whether the money is coming in or not, but it, then I like somehow just attract more people and I get more clients and, and the people that I watch that do the same, they just skyrocket. So that's such a beautiful nugget to remember. Um, so Susie, then going just to my original question that I actually had for you was how did you come to this work? Like what, when was it like that you went, oh, okay, this is where my niche is. This is what I should focus on. Um, well, prior to becoming a coach, I worked in media and I worked, I spent my last seven years of 12 in total at the Guardian newspaper. And I loved that job. I loved the role that I had up until I fell pregnant with my first son. And as soon as I got pregnant, I knew that I wanted to do something that for me had more meaning. And so the wheels were already turning, like, what can I do? Where can I go? But it wasn't until I fell pregnant with my second child um, a year later that I was really like, it's now or never. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? And so what happened was I went on maternity leave. And when my daughter was a month old, I started retraining. And I retrained as a hypnotherapist, a psychotherapist, and a hypnobirthing practitioner. And... It was that was just my way out and my way to finding more meaning. But through that, I started work on the Calm Birth School, and I realised setting that up and working with women right across the world that I really loved the business side and the marketing side. And people were asking me, how have we done this? How has the Calm Birth School grown so quickly? And I started offering training. And I realized alongside the work that I was doing at the Calm Birth School, like this is really fun. And when it comes to my reading and the stuff that I want to talk about, the stuff that I was like devouring was all of the marketing books, all of the strategy yes. books, like marketing courses. Same. And I just, I knew that's the stuff that I absolutely loved. And it's evolved since then. So now I am completely absorbed in all of the mindset and all of the messaging. But at that point, it was all about the strategy and the strategic approach to building a business. And I just, I loved sharing it. People started asking me and I started sharing it. And I just knew, okay, this is, this is where my heart is. Mm. This is going, I'm going to be going off in that direction. Oh, so I love that. So what I want to highlight here for people, because I think there is this, like, I'm here right now. I see this a lot with my, my clients. They're like, I'm here right now in my business or in my career, but I really want to go there. And yeah. there's this like, but how the heck do I get over there? And what I want to highlight here is like, hey, Susie didn't even know that that's what, where she wanted to go. Mm -hmm. She just started with what was right in front of her. And I know that that is actually how it worked for me as well. I just knew that I needed to get out of corporate America. And Pilates seemed like the, the next thing um, that I was really interested in. And it's when you make these leaps and you allow yourself to just explore the options that the whole vision eventually becomes clearer. Um, and I think that's so important for people to remember. And then as you said previously, like it doesn't need to take a long time. I think you just have to make that first move and then you'll be surprised sometimes how quickly things can just happen for you. Yeah. I talk a lot about taking aligned action. So it's really imagining and envisaging 
what would I be doing if I was already there? How yeah. would I be acting today? What work would I be doing? Who would I be reaching out to? And I think that when you take action from that place of, it's a foregone conclusion I'm going to get to where I um, need to get to. But today, this is what I would be doing. This is a light action for where I am today. This is going to take me one step closer. I'm going to do that. And then the ball starts rolling. In that question, Susie actually asked that on one of our mastermind calls last, last year. And she asked that question and she blew my mind. And ever since... I've been using it in my masterminds uh, with my clients, with my private clients, and it is just such a powerful thing to ask yourself because there's a gap between who you who you want to become and who you are, and it's always better to reverse engineer it, like Susie just said, like coming from that place, like that gets done. It's just done and letting go of that worry. Now... Speaking about that, because that takes a specific mindset to really get yourself there. When did you realize that, oh, you know, this strategy stuff is all great, but the mindset work is actually really the work? When when did you realize that, oh, okay? I think just seeing different varying clients' results and really sharing the same strategies over and over again and seeing some people fly with them and some people... I won't say die with them, but some people just not get the results that they wanted. And it was really curious to me, like, we know that this strategy works. Why is it working for some people, mm. but not for other people? And that is when I was looking at what else is going on, what else is different. And I was also working, I naturally gravitated to coaches that were on at me about my mindset. Yes. And so with that input from then and then observing the clients and observing the people that would just skyrocket and observing the people that were taking much slower steps, the common denominator was the people that were doing well had mastered, in inverted commas, mastered their mindset. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like that's what I see with my clients as well. Like it's the people who are willing to um, really put in that belief in themselves, like that, like getting it from that deeper level. They are the people that excel. Um, and so if you're a strategy person, because I'm a strategy person, this can sometimes really mess with you because you're like, but there's got to be a strategy, but yeah. nothing's going <laughs> to and if you're a doer, like I'm, you know, all, all of those things right here, I am. Um, but I have to say, it was really for me this, like, as soon as you step into that mindset and you take that seriously and you treat your mindset like it's going to the gym and like a healthy lifestyle, that's when things start to fall in place. You have these massive ahas. And the beauty of when you're in that space is you all of a sudden realize, and this was such a huge like relief for me who always just want to do, do, do it is like, Oh, I don't need to do that much. I can mm -hmm. actually stay back. I can have the strategies, but I don't have to overdo and over. I used like, it's like a, this push feeling that happens. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, I can sit back and I can allow and receive. Um, which is another actually question that I want to ask for you is like, how do you help people to shift from that, um, that pushing energy where they're actually unknowingly pushing their success away from them versus receiving them? How do you help people to just pull back into their receiving mode and letting things happen for them? I think that it's checking in, getting people to check in with how they are feeling and because you can still i still do a lot of things but the energy that i'm doing the things that i'm bringing to those things is different from when i'm in scarcity mode yes and as type a recovering control freaks i'm sure that there are going to be a few people watching this really get that idea of I need to, if I don't do this now, then I'm not going to get any clients. If I don't do this now, then I might lose this. If I don't do this now, I'm the only one who can do everything. You know, that type of mentality is scarcity mode where you feel like you are having to carry it all. And when you can get someone to say, how are you, how do you feel about this right now? 
and get them to be able to tune in to the difference between mm, this doesn't feel great or this I feel a bit fearful here um, um, the fear is because I haven't done this before but actually it feels like the right thing or um, uh, this I'm getting a red flag it's getting people to get out of their heads and into their bodies mm -hmm. is I think one of the greatest ways for helping people be more discerning mm -hmm. about how they are showing up in their business and in their lives. Yes, yes. And it's like really is so important for you. Like I like to refer to that getting into your body, that your gut, right? Mm -hmm. And the more you can train that part of yourself to really listen and sink in with it, like it's going to give you so many wonderful, beautiful cues and you're going to work in such a foster way almost, you know, and if we, if we look at Susie, um, she started her business four and a half years ago, which really isn't a long time. And she's actually built two businesses in that uh, time span and has been hugely successful. And this is what happens when you work with aligned energy and you're kind of just cruising through. And it doesn't mean that things aren't going to be challenging here and there. Stuff still goes wrong, but you're able to just really take those challenges and move with them versus the person who feels like they're just pushing things up that hill. And it just, ugh, that's a draining energy to be in in itself. Yeah, for sure. So, um, Susie, just another question then is like, um, how do I want to put this? You also help your clients with their messaging, right? Like you're, you call yourself a messaging coach. So how does this mindset influence their messaging? Like how do you draw that like parallel between the two almost or the, yeah. the connection? For you to share your message and your message be your message as opposed to a hodgepodge of all of the people that you admire and all of the people in your industry who are saying similar things in order to tune into your message you have to give yourself permission to do you mm. and giving yourself permission to show up fully as yourself is a is mindset work you know, it's really identifying what are the fears? Why are you scared of saying this thing? What do you think is going to happen? Um, tuning in energetically. What would the person who is already seeing 10 clients a month and charging 10,000 pounds a person, what, how would they act? Where is the gap for you? Where do you feel unsafe to go there right now? It's really being able to tease out where are the blocks, where are the, in inverted commas, limiting beliefs mm -hmm. around you giving yourself permission to show up fully. And the more quickly you're able to identify those blocks, and my job as the coach is to call people out on those blocks and say, you know, this is what you've said that you've wanted. The way that you're acting right now isn't in alignment. Like what's going on with you right now? Um, the quicker that you can do that, the easier it is for you to access your unique message. Yes. And I think the other thing that is evolving in the way that I support people around their message is really understanding is that your message is one thing and the stories that you can use to communicate your message are a separate thing. And when you're able to combine amazing storytelling to convey your message, that's where your sweet spot is. And if you're earning consistently less than 10,000 a month, you need to work on your mindset and your message and storytelling first. Mm, I love that. I love that. And I think the other thing that I, I, I assume this also comes out when um, when you're working with your clients is that like self acceptance, like for you to show up who you are, there needs to be a lot of self acceptance and self love for who you are and what you have to bring. Yeah. yeah, love that. Love that. So what is your number one strategic piece of advice that you have for entrepreneurs that are not quite seeing the results that they desire in their business or the traction? 
Yeah, focus on your mindset and your message. <laughs> We're like, we just covered it. <laughs> That's my number one strategic piece of advice. Mm -hmm. It really is. Like, do you sound like you? And are you, sh are you sharing in the most powerful way you can share your message? Mm. If you were to uh, come across a website or a Facebook post or a blog post that you that the, it was your work written by somebody else, would it make you stop in your tracks? Mm. And if not, there is work to do around your messaging because it's that consistent messaging that is going to help you build your tribe of, and I love, I think it's Kevin Young, he talks about having a thousand true fans. You know, I've built a very successful business with a small community, but that those the community that I have, they love what I have to say and they love to invest in the things that I create because we've built up a really good relationship. Mm. And that is about consistent messaging. Yes, and I want to just have you say that again. Like, you do not need thousands and thousands and millions and billions of people. Because um, there's a there's a statistic out there. I think it's something like eighty percent of your no twenty percent of your customers is going to do eighty percent of your business. Yeah. So the more you can work on that relationship, the more like so you just say says you show up consistently, who you are, authentic. That's how you build that trust. That's how you get those 20% of people to just invest in you. So I love that, Susie. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, now tell us a little bit more because I want to know too about your limitless life experience. Like, what is yeah. it about? Who's it for? Where do we get it? Yeah, the limitless life experience is my flagship program. It's like my baby. And it came through to me last July. So it's a year old. Aww. Um, yeah. It came through to me Happy last birthday. year when I really, really gave myself permission to uh, follow the breadcrumbs that were coming through to me in my meditations and in my journaling. And I knew that I wanted to, up until then, I had lots of marketing courses and more strategic courses and I knew that I wanted to help people access their unique message mm. and I knew that that started with working on the inside stuff first and so the Limitless Life Experience is a program for entrepreneurs to help them reach that consistent 5-10k mark by really working out who they are and what makes them unique. Mm. So we start off all with mindset and messaging. And then once those, and they're quite intense, we go deep. And then we focus on the more strategic side of things. So amplifying that message and helping yourself keep momentum. Whilst my other speciality is showing people how they can create miracles by following their heart and really tuning into who they are in their life and business. Mm. So the Limitless Life Experience does what it says in a tin. It's about helping people create amazing experiences in their life by building businesses that they, that they love. And um, I love it. Yes, yes, you do. Yeah. We know we can see the love <laughs> for it, um, for your little baby. And we also have to say, guys, that um, Susie has built all of this and she has four kids. Yeah. So that in itself is like, wow, just such a powerful woman. Um, Susie, I always enjoy just being in the room with you. You have so many amazing insights and gifts. And I just want to thank you again so much for being here today, for making the time. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you here either on the show or again very soon for all our listeners. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, darling. Bye-bye.